Hey, this is Warren Rendick. A lot of people asked me to address a video by Ben Sullins. Ben Sullins is a much beloved Tesla YouTuber. People have loved this guy for a long time. Yes, I'm being slightly sarcastic. He just released a video that was very, very critical of Tesla and Elon Musk, and I wanted to address some points in his video. I want to start with this remarkable piece of work by Ben. And like I said, I'm a huge supporter of Tesla. I'm a huge fan of Tesla. I love their products. I just wish their company was better. And because of all those reasons, it is really hard for me to recommend anyone buy a Tesla right now. It's just, it's not a place I wanna be. I'm a huge fan. I love their products. I think they're, they're world changing, they're life changing. These are amazing things that I want everyone to see and experience. But because they make low quality products, because you can't trust them and because Elon is a maniac that is an easy guy to hate. I, I don't see a lot of people buying all, you know, letting all those things go just because it has an iPad strapped to the middle of the dashboard. What the hell was that? The guy's all over the map. He, he said, I'm a Tesla fan, but I don't can't recommend their products because they're awesome products, but it's just an iPad on a dashboard. The guy made absolutely no sense there. This is this is a fear that I actually have as a YouTuber. That I think what's happened is what's happened to Ben Sons, what's happened to some other YouTubers, and I got criticized for my criticism of another couple of YouTubers recently, is it goes to our heads. That we start to think we are more important than we really are. That we start to think because I make YouTube videos and I have these fans that, that I somehow know more about Tesla than Elon does. And that's what you're seeing here with Ben Sons is somehow he became too important. In his own mind, he thinks he's more important than the company. So one of the things that you'll catch for me is I'm often trying to explain what Elon means or what Zach Kirkhorn or Drew Baglino means, what the company is doing. I don't think I ever start talking to Tesla about this is what you guys should do. You guys don't know what you're doing. And Ben in this video is accusing Elon of being a liar. He trashes Elon's character left and right, says Elon doesn't know what's going on at his own company. Same thing that a couple other YouTubers said about Elon recently, but I caught heat for that. So I just want to be clear. I know Ben is less popular than the other two guys I was critical of, but it's the same flaw. This idea that because I'm a YouTuber, I've got an MBA in YouTube that I'm suddenly qualified to tell Tesla how to run their company and Elon doesn't know what he's doing. And this, this word salad that you just heard that made absolutely no sense. I, I, the only word I can think of is this guy must have some serious butt hurt. I'm not sure what happened, you know, why he's so emotionally damaged by his relationship with Tesla and Elon Musk, but he's he's gone. So let's go through bit by bit through Ben's villain. Ben is sullen. He's a sullen Ben, Ben Sullins. Let's go through his video and see what the heck he's talking about. There's a bunch of different points. He doesn't like FSD. He doesn't like Tesla bot. He doesn't like Elon. He doesn't like Tesla insurance. Tesla's not reliable, yada, yada, yada. But he's a Tesla fan. All right, let's listen to some more. So, okay, full self-driving is, I'll just say it is a complete disaster and could absolutely tank the entire company. Full self-driving has not delivered what was promised years ago. Uh, I think it's getting quite close. I actually just had a really good experience with FSD beta uh, today where it navigated an intersection it was having problems with before. It's getting better. Ben doesn't really understand. This is one of the problems with critics of FSDs. They don't really understand what FSD is doing, what Tesla is doing to make FSD better. He, he doesn't even care. I don't understand how it tanks the company. Tesla grew sales 87% in 2021 versus 2020. They're opening two new factories. My own models of Tesla's financial success don't depend on FSD for Tesla stock to really 10x from where it is now that they're just going to make a lot of cars. They're making the best cars on the road and they're selling every car that they can make and they sell them at a high, at a high, reasonably high price with a reasonably high profit margin. And that's enough for Tesla to be a very successful company. So I don't see quite how FSD not succeeding tanks the company. It prevents the company from getting even more crazy profits than what they're going to get anyway. But he has some sort of crazed notion that FSD is like a time bomb waiting to explode and destroy humanity or something. I don't know where Ben's coming from on this. You know, in the FSD beta program, I don't know, 60,000 or so people have been driving FSD beta and they haven't crashed yet. So where's the problem? And, and Elon has explained, and I have a video I'm working on where Elon talks about what FSD progress really is. I think people don't fully get it, what they're working on to get FSD where it needs to be. 
But Ben has like long ago forgotten that there was a reason to try to understand Tesla. He just doesn't like where Tesla is. He's got some personal beef with Elon or with Tesla that he's not happy about. And anything that he doesn't like, he just bashes without thinking. There's no thought. There's no analysis. It's just FSD sucks. Whatever. Let's listen to some more. And today there are more people than ever that have paid up to $10,000 for something that doesn't work. And I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say, is not gonna work for a long time to come. Sorry if you thought it was coming this or last or, or, or next year, whenever, whenever you thought it might be coming. Well, what happens then? What happens when the settlement for the next lawsuit is in the billions of dollars? Well, someone's gonna be left holding the bag and I can guarantee you it won't be the richest man in the world, or, or at least he won't be the richest man anymore after that lawsuit, I, I don't imagine. Oh, uh, did you see that, how he got that cute music in there at the end? So apparently Ben is really badly butthurt about Elon Musk being the richest man in the world, and he has some sort of notion that FSD is going to lead to billions of dollars in lawsuit damages. That's somehow a problem. Um, now, look, I can't, you can't argue that FSD hasn't gotten there as quick as we all hoped. Uh, it's not completely true that FSD doesn't provide anything to anyone. There's Navigate on Autopilot, which you get with FSD that you don't get with regular Autopilot. I've driven Navigate on Autopilot, and I thought it was actually pretty good. It's not where we all hoped it would be yet, but they're certainly making progress. And now there's 60,000 FSD beta testers who are using it. And I can say personally, I think it's pretty cool. It's still not there yet, but it's, it's pretty cool and it's getting better. But this notion that there's going to be these lawsuits, he had a reference in his video to some lawsuits where it was like, I don't know, $5 million or $10 million that Tesla had to pay out. This is trivial stuff. And Tesla has probably reworded whatever agreement so that it's more clear that they're not on the hook if they don't deliver FSD on a certain time frame. And people don't get, by the way, that you're not paying $10,000 for FSD. You're paying $10,000 for an option on FSD, now $12,000 for an option on FSD. FSD, when it's actually delivered, will be worth $100,000. And if you buy it today for $10,000 or $12,000, and it's actually delivered in a year or two, you're getting a tremendous bargain. And that's the idea when you bought FSD earlier, was you were hoping that you would get this amazing service later that was worth $50,000 or $100,000, and you only paid $5,000 or seven dollars or $8,000 for it. That's the game. That's the bargain that's in there. And anyone who's following FSD knows once you actually deliver it, it's worth $100,000, not $10,000. So you're paying for the option that it will succeed. And Ben doesn't care, doesn't know, doesn't, isn't interested. You know, this is a very popular misconception about FSD is that you're paying $10,000 for full FSD. You're paying $10,000 in the hopes that it will work. You, you know you're taking a gamble when you buy FSD. And if the gamble comes through, it pays off hugely because you're able to run your vehicle as a robo-taxi and make insane amounts of money with your vehicle as a robo-taxi if you want to. If you don't want to, then you probably shouldn't have bought FSD in the first place. But uh, there, there's a tremendous value there that's locked up. And once they actually deliver FSD, which maybe Ben's right, maybe it's going to take a little longer. Uh, for some reason, Ben thinks it's never going to happen. I think it's going to happen fairly soon. I think one of the things that, that distinguishes... Elon's previous statements about FSD with today is the team is on board. Andre Karpathy's on board. Zach Kirkhorn's on board. The, the rest of the Tesla team has, is now fully on board that they see that FSD is about to arrive. And there's metrics that they're looking at that they can see that it's getting there. And, you know, the number of interventions is declining. And they're, they're looking at certain things that they see. And it's one thing when Elon says something and it's out there, but when the Tesla team is on board, I'm a lot more confident it's really gonna happen. And I see the Tesla team is on board now. Here's this random shot at Tesla insurance that makes no sense. He just throws this random shot coming up. One of the things Tesla did was start an insurance company to provide auto insurance for owners based on their driving habits. But even that has been fraught with problems. And that brings up today's sponsor. I, I don't know where he gets that Tesla insurance has fraught with problems. I haven't, I'm not aware of any problems. I know it just expanded from one state to five states and expecting to expand to more. Somehow, it seems like the only reason he mentioned Tesla insurance was to lead into the sponsor that he's promoting in his video, which was kind of odd. Um, but there's no substance to his critique of insurance at all. It was just like Ben just throwing in a Tesla insurance is stupid idea out of the blue. And it, by the way, he uses excessive Tesla imagery during his promotion of his sponsor, which 
I think is probably a violation of Tesla's publicity rights to be marketing some insurance product that's not Tesla insurance while using imagery of Tesla vehicles. I don't know. I mean, Tesla doesn't tend to enforce that, but it, it seemed really kind of an odd out of the place thing there. So next, Ben really doesn't like Tesla bot. We got a series of clips here where Ben really doesn't like Tesla bot. Listen to this. That was a real product demonstration, if you can call it that, where Elon promised next year that they would have a working prototype of a humanoid robot doing the Charleston or whatever that was. Why? Why, why does this matter? What, what, what does this have to do with the mission? What exactly even is it? And is it just a person in a dumb suit? Was that his ex-wife or latest wife or his fifth wife? There's so many questions here and none of this makes any sense as to furthering their mission. So if you actually listen to Elon, Elon pretty much said in a Lex Friedman interview that Tesla bot doesn't really relate to the mission of accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. Elon said that, that's not the point. And you know, what are this, what is this barbs about Elon's ex-wives? What? What what is this anger? There's some really serious anger. Like I I I, I wonder if I, I'm sorry, Ben. I think you need some kind of help. There's something really wrong with you that you have got so much anger towards Elon Musk. Who, as far as I can tell, like like look, I'm an Elon Musk fan, right? As I see it, Elon's doing a lot of great things, and we should all be excited and having fun watching him. But this point about it not being on the mission, it's not your job to decide what Tesla's mission is. And Tesla isn't diverted from the mission. They're producing more EVs, right? The goal is to accelerate the transition to sustainable transportation, sustainable energy. They are accelerating the transition. They're producing more vehicles. Tesla bot doesn't stop them from making more vehicles. The challenge that Tesla's facing in making more vehicles is a chip shortage. There's a supply chain issue with chips. That's the problem. And ultimately, there's going to be a battery problem next year. And they've talked about all this. But Tesla is working very hard on the core mission of making more electric vehicles. And once the chip shortage gets out of the way, they hope to expand Tesla energy, which also accelerates the transition to sustainable energy. But Elon admits Tesla bot is not necessarily a fit with the mission. It's not it's not against the mission, but it doesn't necessarily fit with the mission of accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. But there's other missions that there's this world of AI coming and it needs to be addressed. And Tesla's full self-driving real world AI may be very useful and may lead to very great use of tremendous uses for a Tesla humanoid robot. There's nothing wrong with recognizing we there's other things we can do with this company besides our main mission. If there are things that will make the world a better place and will make us money. That's something that companies do. And he's got a lot more rants about bot. He really doesn't like bot. So at this point in kind of Tesla's product life cycle, we are way off the deep end. We have completely lost our mission. We are pursuing things that don't make any sense. And Elon is either just straight up lying about these things, or he has no idea what's going on in the company. Well, obviously Elon knows what's going on with Tesla bot. He introduced Tesla bot. And again, this notion that you can't pursue a different side project while pursuing your mission is just utterly stupid. They went from 500,000 cars in 2020 to 936,000 cars in 2021, and they're opening two new factories to produce even more cars. They're pursuing the mission, Ben. Ben, Ben, they're pursuing the mission. Somehow, he like completely ignores, he actually trashed at one point in the video, he trashed the idea of the alien dreadnought, the large factory that's highly automated. You know, Elon frequently talks about one of their big advantages is manufacturing. It's like Ben doesn't really hear. I don't know what some point in his in the last few years, Ben just turned off listening to Elon. Like For me, it's like I love listening to Elon. I try to figure out what is Elon saying? What is Elon thinking? Ben just hates Elon. And anything Elon says must be bad. And anything Elon does must be wrong. And it's 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 really kind of odd. But, you know, the idea that Tesla is not pursuing the emission of accelerating the transition to sustainable transportation, sustainable energy. What, he's, what does he think these two factories that are about to open are doing? Does he think that Elon's not pursuing that? Does he think that the company isn't pursuing two new factories? Does he think that they're not growing the, the production of vehicles? They talked about how they're trying to grow production of vehicles, including at Fremont and Shanghai. They're massively expanding production of vehicles and delivering more and more vehicles to customers. So... What, how are they not pursuing the mission? I, I don't know, it's just like butthurt Ben, but let's listen to some more. 
And then when it comes to these idiotic ideas like the Tesla bot, you have to cancel this whole thing. Do not spend an ounce of energy on this dumb project. It is not a part of your mission. Let someone else, like maybe Boston Dynamics, who's been working on it for decades and doesn't think they're even close to it, let them do it. They have the expertise, they have everything, and that is where it should live. Now, if you wanna fund that project, you wanna buy a part of Boston Dynamics, sure. This is all big business, corporate mergers type stuff that happens. But trying to divert your efforts from other things. So the idea that this is diverting Tesla's efforts from other things, again, it's not diverting their efforts from other things. They're doing the things that they're working on. Tesla has a huge cash pile. They have a lot of talent. They are recruiting robotics engineers who are people who didn't previously work for the company to work on a separate project. They're not taking engineers away from the work that's being done. They're bringing in new people. Boston Dynamics does not have real world AI. Boston Dynamics has robots that can move around as they're programmed, but they don't have the artificial intelligence feature that Tesla is developing. It's like he's not listening. This is one of those things, you know, if you're going to try to figure out what Tesla's doing, it's really important that you listen to what Tesla says they're trying to do. What's happened is that Elon and Karpathy and the autopilot team have figured out that FSD, Tesla Vision, using machine learning neural nets, is developing an ability to understand the world around the vehicle. The vehicle is a robot effectively, and it's developing the ability to perceive the world around it, navigate the world around it, and interact with the world around it. And it's the same thing that a humanoid robot can do. If it can perceive the world around it, it can interact with the world around it, navigate the world around it, that could be something that's very useful. And there's all kinds of potential value there, and they're exploring that. But this is not a distraction from the mission. The mission is going forward full steam. And for some reason, Ben, you know, like, and what, and what qualifies this guy to tell the people who built a trillion dollar company how to run their company? What has he built? What has he done? He built a YouTube channel and he sold out, right? He built a YouTube channel and sold out for some shitty advertising sponsors. W you know, where, what is his qualifications? Is he an engineer? Does he have some experience in manufacturing? Does he understand how to sell products to customers? There's no evidence that Ben knows what the hell he's talking about, but you know, he got an MBA from YouTube in how to make YouTube videos about something, and therefore he thinks he understands the company. This is that, that hubris that comes along with being a successful YouTuber, something that I hope you will let me know when I start going too far. I think I've managed to keep myself in check, and I recognize that I don't know everything, and I pick on Lucid Motors, sure, but I don't pretend to tell Elon how to run his company. So we got one more Ben Hates bot. This is stupid. Cancel the Tesla bot now. Don't even think about other things like a Tesla phone or any of these other dumb unrelated products. Focus on your mission. So, you know, again, this preachy, like, why would anybody think that Ben Sullins is qualified to make management decisions for Tesla? He's not. He's not qualified to make these decisions. He, he's yelling it at the camera doesn't make it more true or more wise. This notion that it's taking them away from their mission is false. I, I don't know what he expects them to do if they're massively growing vehicle sales, they're massively delivering great products to customers. Uh, for some reason, Ben, it's the serious butt hurt. I, I don't know if Elon turned down his romantic advances. I'm not sure what's going on there. He's jealous of Elon's girlfriends and wives. So I'm guessing Ben, you know, confessed his man love for Elon and Elon said no. I, I don't know what what could possibly be going on here, but one thing we know is that Ben loves Apple, sorta. The, this video is peppered with Ben reciting wisdom from some YouTube video he watched and some book he read that apparently qualifies him to make judgments about how to run a company. And apparently Apple is that example, sort of, or is it? Listen to, listen to Ben's love for Apple. It's a, few, it's a few clips here. Now, Apple, like Tesla, has values that resonate with people at a deeper level than just the products that they sell. So whenever they go to make a new product, they're almost guaranteed success because the product itself just furthers the mission. It reinforces the belief and that sense of identity that people have in the company. Uh, I have an iPhone. I have Mac computers. Um, I don't know what Apple's mission is. I don't have that sense that Apple has some great mission. He, he's, 
he sort of praises Apple and then doesn't praise Apple and he'll bash big corporations when Apple is, I believe, the biggest corporation in the world. He, there's something quirky here. Like I, I use my iPhone and I think my iPhone's pretty good, but it's not perfect and it drops a lot of phone calls and autocorrect really sucks and I have to reboot my phone like, I don't know, once a day and my, my ex-wife, she has to reboot her phone, I don't know, once or twice a day. It's not that good. It's okay. I don't. I don't love my Apple phone. I, I just sort of like I'm addicted to it. Um, I, I don't think it's that special. And you know, this is a guy who says that they shouldn't make the bot and they shouldn't make a Tesla phone. Like, what would Ben have said in 2007 when Apple announced an iPhone? Would he said, "Oh no, no, that's going away from your mission. Keep making laptops. Keep making computers." What? I, I just. It, it just doesn't make any sense. But here's more about how Ben loves the iPhone. Think about the iPhone when it first came out. It was amazing. It was a revolutionary design, but there were tons of other smartphones out there. There were tons of other smartphones out there. I remember the Palm Treo and there's Blackberries that were sort of smartphones. Um, I'm not sure Ben's right about that. And I was there for it. And I, I, I might, iPhone was okay. I, I don't remember there being a lot of competing smartphones to the iPhone. I think the iPhone sort of stood out right from the beginning, but okay, let's keep going. And it was years before they basically took over the whole market, and now every phone on the planet looks like an iPhone. Okay, so I looked this up because this didn't make sense to me. What I saw was that Apple introduced the iPhone, and the first year it sold well, and then they like 10x sales the second year, and then they doubled their sales every year for the next few years. The iPhone took off. They sold as many as they could make. Um, you know, sure, they didn't dominate the entire cell phone market because they didn't plan to build that many phones. They sold every one they could make. It was huge demand right from the get-go. The thing took off right from the beginning. Uh, he's got some sort of vision that it took a while for the iPhone to gain traction. No, the iPhone lit up like a Roman candle and just shot into the sky. So I, that's my recollection of it. And I, I don't know what he's talking about. He, he's talking like he understands the history of the iPhone, and I don't think he does. So it wasn't until years after they came out with this product that it became the standard. That's completely false. The iPhone was the standard the day it came out. Everyone raved about the iPhone. It was brilliant. It, it was the standard right away. And in doing so, they had to kind of achieve three different things. Guy Kawasaki was one of the early guys at Apple, and he found that there were three things that were really key to a company's longevity and success. So here we have Ben's source of wisdom is that Ben read a, read a book, he watched some YouTube video, and he listened to three things that Guy Kawasaki said once. And this apparently qualifies Ben to run a trillion dollar company. First is you have to build a quality product. This is the Apple example, where you know that the iPhone may not be the most innovative product. It may not have the latest and greatest features that are out there, but you know it's going to work extremely well. I, I don't know that. I think that Apple iPhones are usually pretty good. They're pretty advanced. They might not have the very, very latest tech, but they're pretty good. But I don't find that iPhones are super high quality. I, I guess different people have different experiences with it. I keep having to reboot my phone. I keep having problems with my phone. Autocorrect is an absolute freaking disaster. Cameras work great. The phone is terrible. Some of the apps work well. Some of them don't. Uh, Apple Maps stinks. Apple Mail stinks. You know, I use the Gmail app instead. I, I, some, of the pro some of the parts of the product are good. Some of them aren't. Um, they've got this nice walled garden that traps people in that you're sort of people end up getting addicted to it because of the way the messaging works or some other things. But overall, I don't think the iPhone is that high quality of a product. And I don't think the customer service is necessarily that good either. But we'll, we'll get to that next. Because it's oddly, he's like praising Apple and he praises the iPhone. And then the second leg of our stool here is trust. Now, Apple actually isn't the best at this because they have a lot of weird rules about how to repair their phones and who can repair them and all that. But the example that Guy Kawasaki uses is Zappos, which is a company that has based its whole premise, its whole selling point is that you know that if you have any issues at all, they're going to resolve them. Just for those of you who don't know, because I wasn't sure, Zappos makes shoes, handbags, apparel, and eyewear. Is this a tech product? Uh, you know, this is this really weird comparison that uh, now Tesla is supposed to live up to the, the customer service standards of somebody who sells shoes, handbags, apparel, and eyewear. And he goes off and he, he, he's he got this other one that he loves. 
Think about Nordstrom's, if you've ever shopped there, where they will go above and beyond to satisfy whatever complaint you have. There is a trust level with Nordstrom's, which is why they can charge more for basically the same product that you can get other places for cheaper. Because you know, if you ever have any issues, you can go back there, no questions asked. We'll take that back, that return. I don't even know if you bought it here. We'll exchange it for something else. You know that they've got your back, that you have trust and faith in them. So that is a big selling point in terms of giving them your money. Nordstrom. So apparently Ben is getting sponsorships from Zappos and Nordstrom or something. I, I don't, Nordstrom is a retailer. It's not the same thing as a car company or a tech company. I. I it's this odd example of pulling Nordstrom's and Zappos out. And this is that YouTube MBA that he, he, he's he got a, a, a master's in business administration from YouTube because he has a YouTube channel and he makes videos about companies and he thinks he knows what the hell he's talking about. That's not a, a reasonable comparison. I mean, I, I don't think Zappos or Nordstrom are trillion dollar companies. They're, they're not trying to change the world. They just sell products to customers. It's just a, such an odd thing. But he he loves Apple until he doesn't love Apple. And, you know, he basically acknowledges that Apple customer service sucks, even though Apple's the example he's trying to use to show that Tesla sucks. Really odd. But I just want you to know, Ben, in case you forgot, Ben is a Tesla fan. And just to be clear, if you're unfamiliar with my background, I've owned Tesla since 2016. I am a huge fan. I've helped thousands of people go electric through my YouTube channel here. I even raised money and delivered a couch personally to Elon Musk when he said he was sleeping in the factory. So yeah, I'm a bit of a fan. And it is upsetting and frustrating when I see them doing this dumb stuff. He's a fan. He bought him a couch. You know, it, it, you can see like, I think he thinks they owe him something because he bought them a couch. He raised money. and He didn't even buy him the couch. He got other people to give him money so he could buy a couch and bring it over. Because I'm a Tesla fan. I'm an Elon fan. I'm a SpaceX fan. I'm getting excited about Starship tonight. Um, I don't find myself routinely bashing Tesla. If you're a fan of Tesla, why the hell are you bashing Tesla? You're not a fan. You were a fan. Now you're a hater. You're very clearly an Elon Musk hater and a Tesla hater. Why do you keep telling people you're a fan when you're very clearly not a fan? You, you're, you've got some serious anger issues and you need to deal with it. And what is going on? There's something about the way he looks in these in this video. He's just like amped up. I don't know if he's doing coke or what the hell's going on. He's, he's like wound up amphetamines or something. I'm, I'm not just saying I'm not saying that's true. I've just I got this feel from watching him that there's something really something really disturbed and i can't put my finger on what it is i'm not saying he's on drugs it just that something looks wrong with ben something's looked wrong with ben for a long time and i don't know what it is it's it's, it's sad to see this it's something that i fear as a youtuber that i will go down this path and i i'm careful not to do this next ben goes off on reliability this is a very popular rant by the the youtubers who think they know better than tesla and they know better than elon and they know better than zach kirkhorn here, here we dive into Ben's, uh, Ben's sanctimonious Tesla's reliability problems that make no sense. Is that Tesla has and continues to completely neglect their existing customer base. And as such, they ranked second to last in the latest consumer reports on car reliability and almost last in the first ever, the un unveiling of the JD Power reliability study. This is a very common uh, tactic that Tesla Q, Tesla haters will use is you cherry pick data. Now here's the reality about Tesla. Tesla scores very high for brand loyalty. You can search brand, you know, Tesla brand loyalty on Google. This is what you will find that Tesla um, is the most valuable car company, three brand loyalty awards, has the most loyal customers, highest customer loyalty of all car brands. Why do you leave that out? Why, why would a company that, that Tesla is leaving their customers behind, why would the customers have so much loyalty? And here's Barron's talking about, and this is a fairly recent article. This is Tony Sakanagi, who is one of Tesla's biggest critics on Wall Street, surveyed 450 Tesla owners and found that 79% are very likely to buy another Tesla. Almost 80% is exceedingly, is incredibly high. Lexus led the report with 48% of owners replacing their prior car with another Tesla, another Lexus. So Tesla is off the charts on customer loyalty. And Ben talks like customers are massively dissatisfied with the company. Makes absolutely no sense. This is the typical, but you know, you can find somebody did a survey somewhere that says Tesla has a problem. And then you screen that from the rooftops. 
But here's more from Ben. He's got this other great source for, for knowing that Tesla has reliability problems. Are you ready for this quality source? But beyond that, there are plenty of other sources that we have here to show how bad it is for Tesla customers right now. We only have to go back a few weeks or a month or so to the last video I did on this, where hundreds of people shared their horror stories. Yes, folks, Ben's source for knowing that Tesla has problems is YouTube comments. I, I have a lot of YouTube comments comments on my channel and they are, you know, some of them are, are reliable comments and a lot of them are not. And, you know, Tesla haters could come in and post random comments all the time. And I, I don't place a lot of weight. I, I read the Tesla, I read my YouTube comments, but I don't all of a sudden conclude that, aha, Tesla has all these problems because all these com people come on my channel and say how terrible Tesla is. I figure that's YouTube, that's Tesla haters coming on writing comments because they hate Tesla and maybe they're shorts or maybe there's something else going on. But, you know, we know from Barron's and we know from loyalty scores that Tesla customers are generally very happy with their Teslas. Much more, much happier than any other car company out there. Huge lead in that subject matter. But Ben goes on with like lots of rants about Tesla service. Because Tesla puts in ridiculous policies to prop up their quarterly earnings and screw people out of their money. Sounds like a Tesla fan, doesn't he? That it's all about quarterly earnings and you know this is one of those things that like wall street hates tesla because tesla is not driven by quarterly earnings and they're critical of elon because he's not driven by quarterly earnings but apparently ben knows better that tesla is driven by quarterly earnings and he's he starts off with some story of some guy who had a problem there's a story of a woman who had a problem and look here's the reality tesla has sold about 2.5 million cars worldwide there's going to be mistakes you can't be perfect the fact that there's a story here or a story there of something bad happening doesn't mean that Tesla has this massive problem. If they had a massive problem like he's talking about, then they wouldn't have 80% of customers planning to buy another Tesla. Tesla customers in general are very happy with their vehicles. Yes, it's not perfect. Yes, there are potential issues with the vehicles, but overall on the whole, you know, I had a lot of problems with Volkswagen dealership getting my oil changes, and I have never had a problem with an oil change with my Tesla. I've never had a problem with a muffler. I don't expect to have any problems with my brakes because EVs use regenerative braking, and that's, that saves the brakes, so the brakes tend not to wear out as fast as other vehicles. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to owning a Tesla, and you can nitpick and you can find a story. And then the, the reason that these stories carry so much weight and get so much attention is because asshats like Ben Sullins and a certain channel that we won't name now you know will repeat these stories and broadcast them as if they are representative of everything. And they never compare Tesla's actual numbers on service to some other company's numbers on service. It's always anecdotes, stories, stories. Like somebody says, oh, they're terrible. And oh, I had a great experience with my Audi dealer. Well, I had a crappy experience with my Volkswagen dealer. Does that, does that all of a sudden mean that Tesla is better than Volkswagen? Because I had one bad experience or a few bad experiences with one dealership. I, I've had bad experiences. We actually bought a Mazda from a dealership, and I later found out the salesman was a convicted child molester. Now, the Mazda is still a good car. But, you know, you can just nitpick any detail. Should I have made this big story about Mazda has a child molester selling cars? I don't know. I mean, he's got to do something for work. It wasn't like there were children, you know, buying the cars. So I guess it's probably a good job for him to have. But just like you just be, but if you take somebody with a platform like Ben and you amplify one story or one or two or three stories of bad customer service experiences, which is going to happen with any company, then you're actually creating a problem that didn't exist before. There is a reality that there will be customer service issues with any company that sells millions of products. The question isn't, do they have any customer service issues at all? Everyone does. The question is, are their customer service problems worse than other companies? And the answer is obviously not because the brand loyalty is so high. So that is a fiction. And it also ignores, this is one of my frustrations with both Ben and that certain other channel now you know. Tesla has been addressing the service concerns and Zach Kirkhorn explained in depth in the Q3 investor call that there was a surge of customer service issues because the public situation changed. People who'd been staying home, hiding out because of a certain thing that's going on in society suddenly went out and started using their cars more and that created a spike in demand for service that they weren't ready for. At the same time, there were supply chain issues making it difficult to get parts and they 
did rapidly increase the number of service centers in Q3, and they continue to increase the number of service centers in Q4. And they've been working on improving the quality of the product so they need less service. And that's been a focus for Zach Kirkhorn. And Ben ignores that. Now you know ignores that what Zach Kirkhorn said. Zach Kirkhorn has been very clear about what they're doing. To The best service is no service is not a joke. They find that they're making better vehicles. Ben talks like the vehicles are getting worse. No, the vehicles are getting better. They're focused on making the vehicles better so that they will have less service concerns. But let's listen to a little more from Ben. The focus on quarterly profits has been a big thing for Elon Musk for a long time. And it all seems to spawn right around the time when his compensation package was tied to that, which is typical for CEOs. And this is where Tesla is falling into the trap that all other public companies have, which is being very short-sighted at the expense of their customers. So this is like a, a really dumb thing because remember Ben was talking about Apple and how Apple is sort of a model to be followed, but Apple is the largest public company. And I would say that almost anyone who watches Tesla would say that Tesla, that Elon Musk is completely different from any other CEO. He's not driven by quarterly earnings. Elon owns like 20, 25% of the company. He's driven by the long-term prospects of the company. I haven't seen anybody who's more driven by the long-term prospects of the company. On the one hand, he's focused on short-term earnings. On the other hand, he's pursuing a project for a Tesla bot that no one expects to sell units to customers for a couple of years. That's a forward-thinking guy who's looking about the, the future of the company. FSD is not a short-term thing. It's a long-term thing. So Ben... It's just talking out his ass. He's not making any sense at all here. But if if you're saying it's like all these other companies, then what other company is the role model that should be followed, Ben? You know, he's just, it's like a word salad. He's just got random ideas in his head. He read a few books. He, he listened to Guy Kawasaki in some YouTube video. And all of a sudden he knows how to run a trillion dollar company. No, you don't. You don't know what you're talking about. Colin Tesla short-sighted. Tesla is the fo most forward-thinking company I'm aware of out there. It's just, it's just dumb. It's also interesting how Ben will very quickly dismiss people who are happy customers. Listen to this. And if you're one of those people listening that is like, oh my God, what are you talking about? You're crazy. I've had only the best thing ever. I, you know, first off, just want to welcome you for being a new owner and, and tell you that there's a saying that my friend Rich Rebuilds has, which is just give it time. So he's just absolutely dismissive of people who've had good experiences with Tesla. Now, the reality is, and Zach Kirkhorn acknowledged this, there were certain areas of the country that did not have sufficient service locations, had other problems, and they had issues. Lots of the country was fine. And there's been improvement all over the place, and they focused on improving the places that had the biggest problems. But, you know, Ben talks about it like this problem is never going away. Tesla doesn't care. Tesla's not doing anything about it. And you know, it, it's very frustrating that I watched Zach Kirkhorn address this in depth in the Q3 investor call and just they turn a blind eye to it. And this is this is this comes from hate. This comes from blind hate. He's so blinded by his hate for Elon and Tesla that he doesn't bother listening to what they say in their investor calls and listen. And, you know, why would Zach Kirkhorn talk about their effort to expand the number of service centers? Why would Zach Kirkhorn talk about all the things they're doing? Why would Zach Kirkhorn talk about their efforts to improve quality so they have less demand for service? Why is he talking about this stuff? And why are why is Ben and now you know ignoring what Zach Kirkhorn said? It, it's uh it's the YouTube MBA. They they think they know better. And there's a little bit more. He's he's gonna bash service one more time here, maybe a couple more times here. A company just thinks they can grow their way out of all their problems. Sales cures all until it doesn't. You see, the problem is, is that you can cancel these other dumb projects. You can, you can stop doing this Tesla bot. You can stop this nonsense with full self-driving, but you can't cancel these bad experiences. Well, you certainly can't cancel the bad experiences if asshats like Ben Sullins exaggerate every single one of them. There's like three or, there's like three or four bad customer service stories out there that Ben Sullins and Now You Know and a few other people just keep ranting about. Look, if there's a million, if there's two and a half million vehicles delivered and 1% of them have a problem, right? That's 25,000 problems, okay? That means if you're 99% great, right? If you, if, you're, if you hit 99% of the time, then you've got 25,000 bad stories. And that's just inevitable. You know, it's not, 
that somehow Ben Sullins, if he was running Tesla, they would somehow have better than 99% customer service. This is silly. Uh, you know, he's just so angry. And this, this, is the, this is the criticism I have of these complaints about services. Well, wait a minute. What are you comparing them to? What are the metrics that you're using to compare them? And if your metrics are, I heard a story and lots of people are talking about a story. Yeah, lots of people trash Tesla all the time. That's called Tesla Q. There's media that bash Tesla. And for some reason, Ben is joining in on the Tesla bashing. And for some reason, now you know, is joining in on the Tesla bashing. If you amplify these negative stories, then they get more, they get more strength. It doesn't mean that there's actually a serious problem. It means that they, you know, there, there's a problem and every company has customer service issues. Are their customer service issues worse than someone else's? And how do you measure that? And Ben, with his, all his sophisticated U2 MBA skills, has not come up with, and now you know, they did not come up with some sort of sophisticated measure of, here's how we know Tesla has worse customer service than someone else. Well, my friend Rich Rebold says, well, Rich has a, has a beef against Tesla too. So, I mean, I like Rich Rebuilds. He's a good guy, but, you know, he's got a beef against Tesla. That's not a measure of the quality of customer service or the number of problems they have compared to the number of vehicles they sell. That's not measuring. That's just talking. She is never going to recommend a Tesla to anyone else out there, no matter how great the car is. Every person she comes in contact with, she is going to tell this horror story to, and that is going to spread like a virus to her community and everyone around her. It spreads like a virus when people with a large platform spread one story. This is one story. It happened a couple weeks ago, and Ben's making a big deal out of it. It is a story. It's not a great story that Tesla mis Tesla customer service mishandled one woman with brake pads, and Ben Sullins decides this is a problem with the entire company. And Ben spreads the story and makes it worse. This is not the story doesn't spread on its own. The story spreads when Tesla haters jump on that story and spread it. And it's worse when somebody who used to be a Tesla supporter spreads it to an audience that wants to believe in Tesla and Ben is trashing that value. Did he not get his referrals? Is he not getting his roadster? What's, what's the butt hurt for, Ben? But he brings it to now you know. You add in other people that have also had these stories, and then what do you have? You have a growing infection of the community, this kind of rotting core of people out there, this big kind of negative sentiment that Tesla makes crap cars. And I'm not the only one saying it. We have some of Tesla's staunchest supporters out there talking about these issues because they need to hear this. See, this is now you know. See, what happens is you have a couple of stories and you have a couple of platforms that have big audiences and they spread one negative story and it sounds like there's 10,000 negative stories out there. Ben made no effort here to quantify how big the problem is. Now you know made no effort to quantify how big the problem is. Zach Kirkhorn addressed it. Neither one of them seems to have listened to what Zach Kirkhorn said. Zach Kirkhorn said, yes, we had a problem. We fixed it. We are making better cars. We expanded the number of service locations. We're addressing part shortages where we can. There are just hard realities of making cars and, and having supply chain issues that sometimes there's problems you can't fix that easily and they're doing the best they can. And as far as I can tell, they're doing better than everyone else. But we don't have numbers to measure to compare this to, to say who's doing better and who's doing worse. We just have, you know, he said it himself, well, you have stories. Well, stories aren't measurement. And if you actually had an MBA, if you actually like studied in a, in a business school program, you'd know you got to measure things. You don't measure things by saying there's one story and a lot of people are talking about it. That's not a measure. That's bad PR that you're pushing because you hate Tesla. Let's listen to a little bit more of Ben rambling incoherently. And the third leg of the stool here is likability. And Guy Kawasaki used the example of Richard Branson, who we all know from the Virgin Group that owns you know, a thousand companies, I guess, at this point. But the thing about Richard Branson is, is that he is an incredibly likable guy. Yes, he is a showman and all these things, but in the example he used in the book, Guy Kawasaki was in the back of a green room before a conference, and he was there talking about how he's never flown Virgin uh, Atlantic or, or America or whatever because he's a big United customer. He's been a longtime member or whatever. Richard Branson gets on his hands and knees and starts polishing Guy Kawasaki's shoes in order to convince him to take one flight on Virgin America. That's a story. Richard Branson kissed a rich guy's ass to get him to fly on his airline. What does this have to do with running a company? What does this have to do with 
Tesla being likable or not likable. This is okay. You can tell Richard Branson stories. How does this, how is this meaningful? Do you do you want Elon to come polish your shoes, Ben? Is is this what's going on? You want Elon to come polish your shoes? I, I, what what is this? Where is this story going? How does this story make any sense? I know where it's going. He's going to say that Elon's not likable, but let's hear a little bit more. Obviously, that won him over, and since then, until Virgin America got sold, he was a huge supporter and fan of them because they were very likable. Everything was nice. Everything was a bit elevated. They were really going that extra mile. So to enchant and keep customers, which is the foundation of reaching the early and then major majority, the big chunk of people out there, you need all of these things. You need a quality product that people know is going to work. You need trust that if there is an issue, if something happens, they are going to take care of you. They will make it right no matter what. It's just like a word salad of Ben just repeating the same BS over and over again. Here's Ben saying that Elon's not likable, which I find comical because if anybody's not likable in this story, it's Ben. Maybe it's me. But the one thing I'll say is I think Elon's likable. We'll get into that. And then, of course, likability. I don't know if I even need to comment on this, but Elon is sort of a maniac and is, you know, putting up memes and assaulting women, being a misogynist. Elon's assaulting women? How did Ben just sort of drop that Elon's assaulting? Since when is Elon assaulting women? Since when is Elon a misogynist? He just, he's attacking Elon for, you know, this is like this massive character attack on Elon. I have not heard any stories of Elon assaulting women. Where did that come from? That's like totally out of the blue. Quasi racist. I, I mean, he, he's been doing this for a long time. And look, as, as an individual, I support free speech. But, m you know, maybe when you're the leader of a just cause, you should pause and think about whether or not this tweet, this comment, this whatever is going to help or hurt it. Because here's the thing. I know tons of people that would love to own Teslas, but they can't stand Elon. And I don't blame him. His behavior online over the past several years has really made him an easy guy to hate. Elon has grown his Twitter following. He now has 73 million followers on Twitter. He hosted Saturday Night Live and it was the best performance of the best numbers for Saturday Night Live of any performance of the year, except I think for Dave Chappelle. I think it was Dave Chappelle. There's like one other show that did better than in terms of ratings than the one with Elon. Elon is extreme. The comedy is that this guy thinks he can talk to Elon about what's likable. Uh, I, you're a piece of shit. I, I don't know, Ben, you're, you're like totally unlikable and you're criticizing Elon. Elon's extremely likable. I know a, a lot of women who like him. The idea that Elon is somehow misogynist or anti-women or assaults women. What, what was that? That was just out, out there. So, so basically what's going on is Ben doesn't like Elon. And therefore, Elon is not likable. And this goes back to this YouTube MBA, this, this hubris that comes from being a successful YouTuber is all of a sudden you're qualified to make these judgments. It, it's pretty obvious to anyone who's looking at objective measures that, that Elon with 73 million followers on Twitter is extremely popular. He says he knows people who won't buy a Tesla because of Elon. I know women who want to sleep with Elon. I mean, he, as far as I can tell, he's extremely popular. His efforts at branding are extremely successful. And, you know, is he perfect? No. Does he offend some people? Sometimes I suppose so. But the practical reality is the guy's trying to cure brain disease. He's trying to get humanity to Mars and to the moon. And he's accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. He's doing all kinds of great things. And for some reason, Ben doesn't like Elon and therefore Elon is not likable. No, Ben, you're not likable. I had so many people asking me to make this video, uh, taking you down for your shots at Elon and your shots at Tesla. You are massively unlikable. Deal with it. Elon is hugely likable because he's hugely likable because he's funny and he's entertaining and he doesn't take himself that seriously. You take yourself way too seriously. Take a chill pill. And boy, some of the things you said about Elon, you know, you, you said Elon is assaulting women. Ben, have you done something? with women that you regret the way you dropped that one that came totally out of nowhere it sounds like maybe you've done something wrong with women ben do you want to admit something ben what'd you do ben well that's our show for today uh for some reason ben sullins doesn't like elon musk he doesn't like tesla but he's a fan okay whatever he's a fan who doesn't think you should buy the products and he thinks it's a terrible company 
Uh, makes absolutely no sense. It was one of the dumbest videos I've seen. So many people asked me to watch this video. I watched it and I, I regret watching it, but here you go. Ben Sullins, congratulations. You're the biggest turd on the internet today. Please check out my other videos. Check out the t-shirts, Insanely Gigantic, everything else at elonbits.com. Please support this channel on Patreon, on Locals, on as a YouTube channel member. And thank you so much for watching.